Allah Azza wa Jal, in the beginning it was Him as a being and there was nothing else. And there's a hadith in Muslim that says that, that Allah Azza wa Jal was there and there was nothing else besides Him. So He wanted to, He wanted others or creation, He wanted a creation to know Him. So He created the creation. So the first thing he created was the pen. And the pen, uh, again that's a hadith in Muslim, that the first thing Allah created was the pen. And the pen was the thing that wrote, he created the tablet. Now what is the tablet? The tablet is a large piece of stone or something similar to it. And he told the pen to write. And he told it to write everything that would come into existence. Everything of his irada, of his will, whatever he's going to will. And he told you to write everything about the creation, whatever is going to happen. So every minute detail to the last detail was all written on this tablet. And this tablet is something that the ulama of tafsir, they've debated where this tablet is. And some have said that it's on the fourth heaven. Some have said that it's above all the heavens. And then there is a debate whether anyone else apart from Allah has got access to this tablet with which Allah has written all the details. Now, <clears throat> again, this is, these are debates amongst the Mufassirin, those who have done tafsir of the Quran. So there's a group that say, no, it is only Allah Azza wa Jal that has, he's the only one who knows what's in this tablet and no one else. But there is a group of, there are a group of scholars who say that only the most high, on the highest of angels have got some glimpse of this tablet. Again, this tablet is so large with so much description that it's impossible for anyone to cover it. It's impossible for any creation to cover it. But the Mufassirun have said that there is, because there is a, there is a, um, why they say this is because the angels, they're divided into two, that's, that's quite clear in the Qur'an. If you look in Surah Tahrim, which is the 66th Surah and Ayah number 6, you will see that Allah describes one form of angels that do exactly as Allah has told them to do. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They do exactly as Allah has told them. They don't question. These are angels who don't question. This is in Surah Tahrim, Ayah number 6. Whereas if you look, look in Surah Baqarah, and the ayah that we're going to study today, Surah Baqarah, ayah number 30, you will find that there are angels that question. And their questioning is not because they're challenging, their questioning is to find further information. And what then happens is that Allah Azza wa Jalla later on, He says, He says in ayah number 32, by, by, the, by the time you get to ayah number 33 in Surah Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says that, Oh, you angels, whatever you used to hide, whatever you hid, I even know that. Now, what is that thing that they, they hid? What is the thing that the angels hid? Now, this is where the Mufassirun say, or some Mufassirun have said, that um, the, some of the highest angels, they only question because they want further clarification. And that they did get some, some of them got some access to some parts of what this creation of the human beings might be and what they might do. How else would they know, how else would they know that this creation is going to shed blood on the earth? How else would they know that? That there's going to be bloodshed on the earth. Because if you think about it, blood itself is, is part of a human thing. Uh, and to kill one other and to shed blood is something that we, we're able to do as in we kill, kill each other. Some others have argued that no, the shedding of blood is something that the angels would have known because of creation Allah created on the earth before the human beings. So for example, Allah created many animals on the, on the earth that would, would, you know, beasts on the earth that, that, you know, we would know perhaps as dinosaurs today. So the thing about dinosaurs is something that we don't deny. We don't deny because we believe that the earth was made many, many, many thousands of years before the human being came onto the earth. An interesting factor that the Mufassirun say is that the human being himself on the earth hasn't been here for very long. So they say that from our time to the time of um, our time to the time of Isa is about 2,000 years, approximately. From Isa to Musa is approximately 2,000 years. From Musa to Ibrahim is about 2,000 years. And from Ibrahim 
to Nuh is about another 2,000 years and from Nuh to about Adam is probably another 2,000 or, or, or more or less years. So what they say, and this is from, most of this is from the, the depth of what the Mufassirun have said. And I, I'm not going to say these are authentic narrations. What I'm going to say is that a lot of this, what I've just mentioned now, is from riwayat or from uh, narrations that could be classified as Israeli riwayat, which means that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Do not." He said, "Do not verify them for certainty," and he said, "Do not reject them totally." And this is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why you shouldn't verify them in its totality is because if you verify everything that is there, uh, it, you might verify something that wasn't true. And if you reject it, you might reject something that was true. Now, where did the Israeli riwayat come from? Where did the Israeli riwayat come from? The Israeli riwayat came from the ulama, the scholars, early scholars of Islam amongst the Sahaba who were Jewish rabbis before. They were Jewish rabbis and some of them were Christians before. Uh, and the Ahbarul Yahud, the rabbis, there's a good three, four or five of them, notably three of them, who came, when they came to Islam, they started to narrate what the Torah had from beforehand. So remember about the Torah, we know that it is a true book and we can't deny, deny whatever is in there because we might be denying something which is not true. Now if it's going against the Quran and the Quran says that was wrong, we can deny it, that's fine. But if the Quran hasn't spoke of it and Rasulullah hasn't spoke of it, but it's there, Rasulullah has said simply just you can, you can read from it, hear it, fine, but don't verify it to its absolute certainty and say it is authentic and don't deny it either and say no, it is not true and it's batil or something and it's, it's un unfound because of the nature of what it might be. It might be Allah's word in, in, in the end, right? So anyway, this is from the Israeli right of how many years it is. So according to that, it would be about 10,000 years or perhaps a little bit more from the time of Adam being here. Now again, this will go against many of what the, um, you know, the archaeologists or others are saying today. Now I'm not saying again this is Islamic, but this is something that has come through the traditions from some rabbis who converted to Islam amongst the Sahabas. There were Sahaba who then started to narrate what was in the Torah. Now another thing we, we, we get from here, because none of this period, you see, the only thing you get from the authentic source is that Allah created the pen, and then he created the tablet and then he created the angels. We know that he created the angels. Now that would be something from one of the first things Allah created fine. He created the angels. And then after that, he, he, created, um, he, he created the earth. And that there's a lot of description on the earth itself and what he created and how he created and that's in the Quran. Uh, and then in, in, there's a hadith in Muslim to say on specific days, Allah created different things. Specific days, Allah created different things. And there is that thing that in the Quran it says, Sittati ayyam, that Allah created all of this in six days. Now this is in various parts of the Quran that Allah created all of this in six days. Now the Torah goes on to say, Na'udhu Billah, we don't believe in this, that God rested on the seventh day. Now we don't believe in that. But we do believe that it took six days to create the whole of this existence. Now, when we say six days, Allah Azza wa Jal says in, a, in an ayah of Surah Hajj, He says, وَإِنَّ That one of your days is equivalent to a thousand days, according to what Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, so one, of, one of Allah's days is like a thousand of our days. So, which means that it was six thousand, um, sorry, um, one day of Allah is like 1,000 years according to you. That's one day of Allah is according to 1,000 years of yours, which would mean that six days of God would be 6,000 years of the human being. So the whole of this existence by the Quran, according to this ayah, it would mean that it took 6,000 years for this earth to form. 6,000 years. Now, what would have happened there is, when Allah had created the angels and then he decided to create the earth, then we know from an ayah in Surah uh, Al-Anbiya again, uh, it was, um, was Ratqan fa fataqnahuma. An ayah in Surah um, uh, Anbiya, Surah number 21 says that it was all together and then Allah then spread it out. Now, some people have gone to say that this is the, this is the um, evidence for evolution. But please don't be Muslims who jump to this because 
we Muslims don't need to go into, now we don't need to prove the Quran is, is testifying what, the, what, the, what science has already discovered. Because the discovery of science is not complete. Muslims make this mistake. So what happens is that when, the, when they said that the earth is going around, no, so the earth is in the middle, is in an axis, and the sun and all the stars are going around the earth, all right? There would have been some scholars would have said, see the Quran said, yeah, everything's going around, around, all right? They're all going around in orbit. But then it was the science went to say that no, it's the earth that is going around the sun and that the sun is on an axis. And there were scholars who said that, yes, see, the Quran said the same, you know, different scholars in a different era, they said, do you see, the Quran said, you know, everything is orbiting around, and that's what it means now, what science just said, that's what we mean. And then finally, they said, well, the sun is also moving, and all the stars are moving, and the planets are moving, and now scholars, today's scholars are saying, the Quran in Surah Yasin has said, Kullun fi falakin yasbahun, everything is moving in its own axis, everything, including the sun, see, the Quran was right. Now, if you look at that, that that's, that's a really, you know, that's a dodgy way of going around trying to, trying to chase science. You know, we don't need to chase science and say, oh, oh yeah, you've changed. Uh, let's look back in the Quran. Uh, yeah, you were right. You know what? You know, the Quran, yeah, we were right before you, right? And when they change, each time they change, we try and change along with them. Now, that, that's, that's really dodgy. Now, what we've got in the Quran, we should blatantly tell the world, this is what the Quran has said and we don't care about you. You will eventually come to, to it. Like one of the things that we're seeing in, in this is what Allah created the human being by. Adam alayhi salam, when Adam alayhi salam was created, he was created by clay. Clay, the word is clay and it's hama'in, which is dark clay. And it's something which was a dry clay until Allah Azza wa fashioned it and so on. We'll get to that in, in, in a while. But if you look at modern science, they're going to say, what? They're going to say, clay? Human beings are made, you know, what? You say the human being is made of clay? Now they're outrightly denying it. And it looks like, you know, if you go by science, it's going to look like we're a little bunch of monkeys here trying to say that, you know, we've been made of clay. Clay, right? But if you think about it, we should stand up and say, no, you scientists, you are a bunch of whatever. Or I won't give you the word. <laughs> You're a bunch of whatever. The Quran has said it. Khalas. Khalas, just wait. Just sit down. Just say. Just say as loud as you can to the whole of the world and say, yes, we have been made of water. Quran has established mimma'in. It said water. It has said, um, uh, one party says water. One party says nutfa. It says semen. Another party says clay. Now, it was made by all these things. All these things are the combination of the human being. Now, they might deny this today, but we should outright say, no, this is the truth. This is it. What will happen eventually is science one day is going to have a discovery. It's going to say that we've now just, you know, with our new mechanism, we found that there's element of clay inside the human being. That's the day we should shout out about. And you know what we should do? Before they actually start to discover this, we should blast, we should blast this across the world. There's going to be a lot of people laughing at us. A lot of people saying, you Muslims are stupid, your Quran is wrong, you've got it all upside down, you don't know what you're talking about, right? Science says this, let's blast it across the world until the day they discover it, that's when they will say, uh-oh, you know, Muslims are right, you know, <laughs> we, got, we got it wrong. We've been, we've been bullying these Muslims, we've been ridiculing these Muslims, and these Muslims have got it right in the Quran. So my point here is, don't try and, you know, chase science and trying to use the Quran as, as a mechanism to tr try and prove what science is. Now getting back to the creation of, uh, of what Allah Azza wa created, He created the angels fine, He created the earth, right? If I get the chance in one of these sessions to go through what Allah did with the earth and how He created it, because there's a lot of, a lot of things in that to, to learn. Um, we, we can learn a lot. Now six days, six, day, six days or six thousand years it took. But then the seventh day, there was no creation because we've got seven days. So our understanding is, and this is my, by one of my, um, again, I've, I've had wonderful teachers. One of the wonderful teachers I've had is Manafad Rahim. And he's gone deep into these tafsirs. One of the big tafsirs to, to go into, it's in Arabic, is Ruhul Ma'ani by uh, Allama Alusi. Now, I'll be honest with you, um, each ayah, each ayah, I was just reading it just last week. If you look under each ayah, you're looking at pages and pages and pages under almost each word or few words, right? This is a tafsir 
written with about, if you count about 40 lines, with each line got about, say about 15 to about 18 words, 15 words or something, all right? 40 lines, and you've got book, uh, one volume that is about that thick, and you've got about 15 of these volumes, all right? For the whole Quran Tafsir, it is an ocean, right? Now on this, he's got a lot of, he's, he's, he's collected a lot, and he's, he said a lot, and one of the things he says is, Alama Alusi says is, that there's a reason why Allah Azza wa Jal created the earth and He created in six days. And there was nothing on the seventh day. Now the, the, the biblical story that has been altered has completely got it wrong, which is that God rested on the seventh day. That's completely wrong. The reason why is Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to teach the human beings. This is one big lesson we learned from this. He wanted to teach the human beings that you cannot the creation cannot continue on a seven day period working. It can't. It will go bust. There will, there will be mechanisms in the human being that will go bust. The creation has been created and all this creation will be created in a way that it demands a rest. That's why it's good to have a day off, at least one day off, if not have two days off. To, to stop your system, to remove work away from rest itself. This seventh day that was left was not for God. It was for his creation to understand that the creation will need rest. Right? The other thing is, we understand that another big debate is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Kun and Fayakun. He says, Be and it is. This is in Surah Yasin and many other parts of the Quran. So why didn't Allah Azza wa Jal just say, Be? And the whole thing would have just been, just come into existence. And Allama Alus and many other Mufassirun say again there, is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He took 6,000 human years to, to make this, because He wanted to show us that the things that are made over time, that take dedication, that take a lot of effort, that take a lot of patience to make, are more they will last longer than those things that are created in haste. That things are created in haste. And there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says that Al-anatu min Allah wal ajalatu min shaytan Or kama qala alayhi salatu salam Al-anatu min Allah wal ajalatu min shaytan Which means that to take your time to perfect something is an original act of God. But to be hasty and do something in haste is an act of the devil. Right? So we Muslims, one of the things we should learn is that you do something, you do it properly. And there's another hadith where Rasulullah in the, in the end of his life, in the ninth year of his Medina life, his, there, there's, many different, there's, there's many different tribes that are coming to see the Prophet So there's one individual, you know, I haven't got the name in my head right now, but there's one individual who comes and all his fellow people, they rush to see Rasulullah Sallallahu They're Muslims, they've embraced Islam, they've never seen the Prophet Sallallahu They embrace it in a faraway town somewhere. They spend several days coming to Medina and they all, you know, when they came to Medina, what's the first thing you want to do? The Prophet is alive, he's in the masjid, you want to go straight away. So they all ran into the, you know, they went straight away, hurrying to the masjid. And they met the Prophet Sallallahu and they hugged him and so on. They sat with him and, you know, and then later on, comes this one man and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then finds out that this man is from this tribe and that he didn't come with the rest of them. He, he wasn't hasty and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, who are you? And then he said who he was. I said, where, where, where were you? And he said, well, Messenger of Allah, when I came to Medina, obviously we had traveled for so many days. So what I wanted to do, I didn't want to meet you in that state. I didn't want to be all dusty and, you know, need a shower or need a bath and then so he said i went away my rest of my colleagues they came to you and they met you my peers they came and seen you but i went away and i bathed i bathed properly i i put good clothes on and then i've come to see you that's when rasulullah said to him he said you have got some qualities in you that allah loves and he said one of those qualities allah loves is to take your time to do something nicely Right? So this is what we learn from this is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He took His time to make the world because the world's going to last a long time. And He's teaching human beings that when you craft and create something, because in these six days or six thousand years, He created the, He shaped the, um, the mountains. 
He made the oceans. He made the, you know, he put in onto it the, the trees and the many things that it needed. Allah Azza wa Jalla did that, right? So he's teaching us that craftsmanship or to create something, you know, we, we all know, we all know that monuments that have been made with extra care, they last a lot longer than monuments and buildings that you just create in haste and they will be finished in just in 30 years or 20 years, okay? So when Allah Azza wa Jalla created all this, the Mufassirun say, and this comes from the whole tafsir behind Iblis, right? Now, Iblis is a creation of God. Iblis is a creation of God. Iblis is a jinn. Iblis is, you know, he's made of fire, which the Quran talks again in several places that he's made of fire. But where did Iblis come from? And were there the likes of Iblis before? So the Mufassir have come to, and again, this is based on Israeli riwayat from those narrations that I talked about earlier. And what Allah Azza wa Jal did is that he created a whole creation of jinns that were on the earth, and this is, you will find in many of the early Mufassirun have commented on this. He created them on the earth and they were those who on the earth, they had got taklif. Now what is taklif? Taklif is that God's now given them a responsibility to recognize him. Now when Allah gives responsibility to creation, he will, he will send messengers. So what Allah did is that he sent jinn messengers. So before there was human messengers, before Adam salam, who was the first human messenger, there were many jinn messengers that Allah Azza wa sent to them. Now the jinns are made of fire and the jinns, one of the things they have inside, you know, being fiery is that you're, you, you're angry and you're, you're hasty, you're fast, you're very powerful. Now the sifat and the qualities that the jinns have between them is that they are in fights and they are in quabbles and they are in superiority and who can prove who's greater. This is one of the natures of nature of the jinns and they're always in the spirit of challenge. Um, now there are good jinns. Allah has, 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 has said that in Surah Jinn itself, he's talked about two different groups of jinns and he said the Salihun and there's those, those who are pious and those who are not pious. Now the ones that were on the earth were both types and messengers came down. But the messengers in the many numbers were killed by the jinns on the earth. And there was great corruption that, was, that prevailed on the earth. There was great corruption that prevailed on the earth. That's when Allah Azza wa Jal, He decided that, you know, from, from the, obviously from the jinns, there were those who were, who were very pious. Now there was one notable jinn that was very pious. And again, all of this is in the Israeli riwayat. You can't verify it and say it's absolutely authentic. You can't deny it and say it's, it's a total, you know, you know, it's total, totally false. So <clears throat> from this, from this narration, what we get is that um, the Iblis being who he was, he was a good jinn and he started to worship God, worship God to the extent that Allah allowed him because jinns could fly, see, and jinns could go to, through, through many of the heavens. They could go up, up and down. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They could travel up. It was only when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi came that they were that they were trapped within this first universe. This is clear from the Quran. This in Surah Safat you will find this. In Surah Jinn you will find this. That Allah did not allow them to go beyond the first heaven or the first heaven, meaning the end of this universe. They can't go past that after the after Rasulullah sallallahu became a prophet. But before that, they could go above that. So what happened is that on these travels, Iblis proved himself that he was so close to God. And Allah Azza wa Jal then allowed him to get closer and closer to higher and higher basically. And they say in some of these narrations that there was not, no space in the heavens was left, like no large space was left in the heaven, but Iblis had gone there and he had worshipped God. So he was a very, very, very close, you know, you could say jinn, a servant jinn, whatever you want to put it, to God. Until then, Allah Azza wa Jal allowed him, allowed him to come in the company of the malaika, of the angels. And he got the chance to be in the company of the malaika. Now that we know that the fact that Iblis can see the angels, and the fact that the angels can see him, that we know established from the Quran, because that's in Surah Baqarah, that's in Surah 
um, Hijr and it's all written there that you know there was this conversation going on when Allah told them told the angels to bow down so Iblis clearly was able to see the angels and so on bowing down and he refused to bow down now however he got here this is the Israeli riwayat now he got together now the Israeli riwayat say another thing which is that Iblis was sent Iblis if, no Allah decided that he's going to send the angels down to the earth and to banish the 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 uh, mutamarridin or those um, jinns that had causes a lot of corruption on the earth. So this group was going to come down and they're going to kill many of these jinns that were just out of control. Iblis volunteered that if he can come with the angels to kill these, ki these corrupted jinns on the earth. And Allah gave him permission. So he came and they killed a lot of these jinns. They left only a few on the earth. And from these few again the progeny of the jinns would start. Now Iblis returns back, now many, many, thousand, many, many, maybe hundreds of years, I don't know, whatever is going by, by because jinns have very long lives. They don't have short lives that the human beings that, you know, we only have, a, you know, 60, 70, 100 years. They have hundreds of years. Perhaps they have, they could have, a, you know, a few thousands of years of, of living. Um, just Adam, alayhi salam, he lived about a thousand or more thousand years. Nuh, alayhi salam, we know according to the Quran, he propagated for 950 years. So we don't know how, now this is the human, early human beings. Later on, there's a hadith in uh, Tirmidhi that explains that Allah Azza wa then started to um, cut down on the, on the size of this human being that Allah Azza, Azza wa created, which was Adam alayhi salam. But anyway, coming back to this original thing, which was, now you've got Iblis that has gone down there, that has banished these jinns, jinns most of them who are corrupted on the on the earth and is returned back with the angels now he was with the angels but allah makes it very clear in surah al uh, surah al um, surah isra or surah bani israel um, allah makes it very clear that he was not from the malaika he was from the jinn now why allah makes that clear is because we understand that no jinn can ever no no malak or no angel can ever disobey allah azza wa jal allah has made it in their nature not to disobey allah but a jinn can so the the biblical sources they have now faltered again they say they call it a fallen angel so what they say is that if an angel decides to go against the will of God or the command of God, then that angel, Allah drops him from the rank of the angels and now he becomes a fallen angel. That's the biblical sort of side or some, what some of them believe. The Muslims don't believe that. No angel can ever disobey Allah So that's where we find that Iblis was able to disobey Allah because he wasn't from the, the Malaika. Now there's one, one thing here, why is it that Iblis is now going to disobey God? Now you've got to understand the whole thing behind the creation of Adam alayhi salam. Suddenly Allah reveals to the angels and he says, and this is the ayah that we, we, we're on today. This is Surah Baqarah, ayah number 30. وَإِذْ قَالَ Rabbuk, When your Lord, your provider, when your sustainer said to the angels, I'm about to make on the earth a Khalifa. I'm about to make a vicegerent or someone who will take command, second in charge, or someone who will rule again, reign after the last reigning. I'm about to make a Khalifa on the earth. Now, when Allah said that, Iblis got really happy, right? He must have got really happy. And you know why? Because Iblis knows that the angels are not the ones who are going to rule the earth. If there's anyone, there's going to be the creation from the jinns. Allah is going to now make a khalifa perhaps from the jinns. But Allah's decision wasn't that he's going to make a khalifa or a vicegerent from the jinns. His decision now was that he's going to create this new creation. Now this shocked Iblis. Because all these years that Iblis had worshipped Allah and had been so good was because he wanted power. He wanted prestige. He wanted to be in charge on the earth. He wanted to be, you know, come back on the earth and he's going to be sent perhaps as a messenger or he's going to be sent with a new command of God on the earth or he's going to be in charge of the jinns on the earth. There's something beautiful that's going to come for Iblis or, you know, that, that jinn that, that, you know, he's a jinn. Something that he had a big glimmer and a big hope in and all that was getting crushed now with this new creation. Now, who is this new creation? What has he done? He's got no history. Now, think 
about Iblis, what's going through his head. He's seeing that there's no history of this thing, this creature. And what, are the, what did Allah do? Allah Azza wa Jal, He took, now this is a hadith in Tirmidhi. Allah took different parts of the earth and He molded it into clay. And from there, it, you know, there was water added to that until that clay turned dark and black. And then that clay, Allah fashioned it into the form of the human being. And then what Allah did is that He then waited till it was dry. And then now this is taking time. We don't know how long this took. So this clay now goes dry. Then Allah makes the, creates the holes inside this. So basically there will be the hole of the mouth and the hole of the ears, the two ears, the holes of, you know, the, the private parts and the, the hole of you know, the nostrils and so on. So when you make a hole in a clay, then if you were to hit, or if you just to st strike that clay, it will make a sound. All these things Allah describes in the Quran. I'm going I'm to tell you what words refers to this, but let me give you the, the outer part of this. So it would make a sound. Now it's getting easier. Even more, you know, it's getting even more sort of real. This thing Allah has created. Now, this is in the space of where the angels can see it, Iblis can see it, and Allah's, you know, Allah's fashioned it. And now, when the clay is becoming dry, it's taking a different color. And the color that it takes eventually is the color of wheat. Wheat. And that's why Adam got his name from. Because Adam is from Udum, which is wheat. And his color was the color of wheat, right? Light brown kind of color. Now, if you want to know the superior color of the human race, it is what? It is wheat. It is the color. So the closer your color is to wheat, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You know, some brothers in the world, they die to try to become like Europeans and the, and the Americans and so on to get redneck and to have white skin or whatever. That is not the, that is, that is one side from the 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 dhurriya or from the progeny of adam and the other extent is you know the 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 other side of let's say our brothers from africa but allah azza wa he took from the earth from different parts of it he took he took many different parts of it and he created adam alayhi salam so he took from the white white rocks he took from the black rocks, he took from the brown soil, he took from the, from the red, he took all these different colors, all right, from the yellow sort of sandy type of, you know, uh, ground material that you get. Allah took all of that. This is, this is all these different parts that Allah took. Why? There's a reason. And we learn a big lesson from it. Because if Allah, first, if he didn't take from all these different material, from the, from the progeny of Adam, you wouldn't get that many different colors. So to create those colors, Allah took that. A second thing, Allah, the reason why is because to understand the whole thing about race. We are different race. You know, we are all children of one big family, right? Imagine, you just look at one another and think, right, that we're all from one great grandfather, right? One great grandmother, right? It makes you feel sort of close. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Hujrat, Ya nas inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa unsa. Oh, people were created from one male and one female. Now, and Allah says, we may, I made you in different tribes and so on. And Allah says, the most noble of you are those who have the, has the gracious taqwa. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. Now, the beauty of this is that Allah takes from different parts of land and He says, different parts of land from one, one pair, one pair of human beings. One pair, only one pair, Adam and Hawa. And from there, he creates all of the creation. And he tells that creation, the most noble of you are the ones who have taqwa or the ones who have God consciousness. Now, the beauty of that is whether you're black, whether you're you know, white, whether you're red, whether you're brown, whether whatever color you want to call yourself. All right. The beauty is that the taqwa is in each and every one of them. That's the beauty of it. 